Hi, I hope you and yours are staying safe and healthy and away from coronavirus. On this video, which is the third video on coronavirus updates from Reunited Spirits, I will talk about antiviral medications because I was specifically asked by a few people to talk about these antivirals or specifically anti-RNA viruses medications. And uh, I was specifically asked by some people to talk about Avigan, uh, which is anti-flu. Avigan is the brand name. And the other name is Favipiravir or Favipiravir. I will talk about this medication and a couple other antiviral medications and in the future I will talk about other medications and vaccines that is the topic of one of the programs but uh, because we have promised you that if you ask for your favorite topics I will talk about that so that's why today's program is about these antiviral medications to see what's going on with these medications and they are under clinical trials and see uh, what is the reality and where we are right now with these medications. Before starting the main topic, let's take a look at the number of coronavirus cases and uh, total death cases in the world. This update is on April 4th. 9.32 a.m. and the total confirmed cases in the world is 1,141,190 cases. The total death is close to 61,000 which among the um, every country in the world Italy has the highest uh, number of deaths unfortunately 14,681 and after that is Spain and the third one is United States which it doesn't show here because when you click on United States it goes to uh, different states so this is only New York but as far as I know uh, the number of deaths up to now in United States is about 7,800. Okay, so let's start on the main topic, the antiviral medications and a specific medication like Avigan. Uh, this is from The Guardian. Um, I try to do my best to make the frame as small as possible so you won't be distracted by the advertisement. However, uh, there are some advertisements here. So, uh, here, this is The Guardian, and this article was written on March 18th, this year, 2020. Pay attention, please, to the title, and be careful with the type or the format of uh, writing or uh, reading or hearing from uh, different channels, different articles or magazines. If you pay attention to this, it says Japanese flu drug clearly effective, okay? And it's kind of, it put it in the mind of the reader that is clearly effective. It says Japanese flu drug clearly effective in treating coronavirus. And then it says, says China, okay? So yes, it is from China and based on what Chinese doctor said however the way they titled the article is very interesting now, if someone read this part in the mind of that reader it looks like everything is good it's clear now it's clearly effective okay so this medication Avigan or uh, Fabi Pirabir is from Toyama Chemical which this, this company uh, made this, uh, this medication and this company actually is a branch of Fujifilm. The parent company is Fujifilm. And here, you uh, let's read this together. It says, 
Medical authorities in China have fed a drug used in Japan to treat new strains of influenza appeared to be effective appeared to be effective in coronavirus patients, Japanese media said on Wednesday. So this is kind of he said, she said. Okay. I I don't want to actually um, undervalue the medication. Uh, it, it might be effective. However, I want to warn you when you spread the news, the words about the medications, about vaccine or anything in this critical situation. Be careful with what you read, what you hear and what you spread. So they, they did uh, a trial on 340 patients, which was not a randomized trial. So it's not actually very scientific. And uh, this medication, well, previously uh, was made for flu and the uh, safety has been tested before. So we're okay with that. Uh, even in any specific use of any medication, you have to uh, test it again. However, part of that was done before because this medication was on the shelves, was on the market for another reason, for like flu. So it says patients who were given the medicine uh, in this hospital, Shenzhen, turned negative for the virus after a median of four days after becoming positive, compared with a median of 11 days for those who were not treated with the drug. Please remember this part. I'm going to show you something else in another article compared with a median of 11 days for those who were not treated with the drug. In the mind of the reader, it looks like this uh, medication, this Avigan, was compared with a placebo. It, this sentence, it looks like it, but it's not. And I'm going to show you <clears throat> another article that it shows exactly this study in a different way. Uh, so it says uh, public broadcaster NHK said and then here Fujifilm Toyama uh, chemical which developed the drug also known as Abigan in 2014. The uh, company declined actually to claim on it because they know it, these studies are not really like a real uh, scientific clinical trial. But because of this news, the stock uh, price went up by 14.7%. Okay? And then here it says doctors in Japan are using the same drug in clinical studies on coronavirus patients with mild to moderate symptoms. Please pay attention to this. With mild to moderate symptoms. Hoping it will prevent the virus from multiplying in patients. And here, but a Japanese health ministry source suggested the drug was not as effective in people with more severe symptoms. We've given Avigan to 70 to 80 people, but it doesn't seem to work uh, that well when the virus has already multiplied. So, I, that's why I told you pay attention to the keywords. So those people who had mild to moderate symptoms, apparently this medication was effective, but we don't know yet for sure because it has to go through double-blinded, uh, randomized uh, clinical trial to to really know the truth. Okay, so let's see. Another article, again, about the same trial and the same study. And this one is from Medical News Today. And this title actually is probably is a little bit better. It's kind of question. Is the anti-flu drug Avigan effective in treating COVID-19? So it's probably a fair question to see what's going on. And then... Uh, Let's go to this study to show you that this study why is not very 
reliable. But, uh, still, mm, I, I should say it again that uh, this medication might be helpful. We don't know yet, but it's very important to spread the word the way that it is and not giving false hope to people. And some of you, you know that I'm a personal and professional development coach and I all talk about staying positive and positive, positive mindset and stuff. Those are true, okay? If you compare one group with the same medication, okay, same medication, whatever medication might be, maybe it's just a placebo. One group has a positive mindset and believe that medication works. And another group with the same number of patients in that group believe that that medication doesn't work. The studies have shown that those people who stay positive, those people who believe in the medication, even if that medication is just a placebo, it's just a sugar pill, it's nothing, there's no uh, real medication in it. The group with positive mindset, uh, more people in that group uh, are treated and they get better. That is true because positive mindset actually help our immune system to work better. That's a different story. However, when it comes to science, we have to be careful about the news about spreading the words about different medications, especially in this critical situation. So let's take a look uh, at this study. First of all, the sample study is very small, way smaller than you can uh, get a definite result out of it. 35 people got the uh, medication, the Avigan. Uh, compared to 45 patients who got uh, the HIV drug, anti-HIV drug, which is a combination of lopinavir and ritonavir. And then the study showed that those people, the group who took, the like 35 people, who took uh, favipiravir, cleared the virus in an average of four days, which is good. It's a good news. However, these were the patients with mild and moderate symptoms, not the severe mm, symptom, symptomatic patients. Because as I showed you in the previous article, Japanese uh, doctors showed that actually it was not effective in people with severe symptoms. So probably this medication is good for those people who are at the first stage just right, right after they are positive for the virus and they have mild to moderate symptoms. And then let's go to uh, this part, which is kind of conclusion of this article. It's, it says, this small study provides some potentially exciting results, but the, the lack of randomization, uh, randomization means uh, we're in, in medicine when you uh, study about a, clean, a medication, you put that medication against a placebo in double-blinded randomized clinical trial. Double-blinded means nobody knows, like none of the doctors, nurses, or none of the uh, patients in two groups that are, are compared with each other, the, none of them know about which one is the medication or which one is the placebo. And then they are coded. And then after the study is done, they open the code and then they realize uh, which one was the medication, which was the placebo, and then they compare the, uh, the results from both groups. And then they, uh, when they compare it, they come up with the final result to see if that medication was really effective uh, or not, okay? So this study, first of all, was very small. It was not uh, double-blinded. It was not randomized. 
uh, so let's go back to this. It says this small study provides some potentially excited result, exciting results, but the lack of randomization, the differences in severity of the disease, the differences in age of the two groups, and the lack of blinding of outcomes to the researchers all cast doubt on the findings. So basically, up to now, we don't know exactly if this is really effective or not. Might be, and I hope so. I hope this is effective, at least for those people who have mild to moderate symptoms. Let's go to the next article. Okay, so this article is pretty new. It's actually today. Uh, this morning, this article was published. And it talks about this medication that uh, Japan is racing to test a drug to treat COVID-19, which is basically talking about um, the same study. But I wanted to show you that this study, the real um, clinical trial study, um, is under its way and under clinical trial right now. And we have to wait to end of June, okay? So a critical step in that process involves clinical trials, one of which, like there are uh, studies in different centers, um, and one of which conclude at the end of June. And I think this is like the very first one that uh, they get the, the results out of the uh, randomized trial. And we have to wait to see uh, the to see the result and to see if this medication uh, is really effective. Now let's go to other medications and talk a little bit about the other medications. So on this article which is from New England Journal of Medicine and this one uh, actually is one of the reliable sources. Um, it's a scientific uh, publication. Uh, on this one, they talk about the study uh, to see if the anti-HIV medication, which uh, is a combination of lopinavir and retinavir, uh, if this is effective against COVID-19 or uh, novel coronavirus. So let's go straight to the results. So they studied 199 patients who uh, were confirmed uh, they, uh, they were infected by this uh, new uh, virus, SARS-CoV-2, uh, which the disease names, uh, named COVID-19. 99 patients got the medication, uh, the anti-HIV medication, and 100 patients under just standard care. They didn't get the medication. Uh, and the results showed that uh, this medication, the anti-HIV medication, which is a good medication for AIDS, treating AIDS. However, it was not effective uh, against the COVID-19. So I just wanted to let you know that there are a lot of uh, antivirals medication on the study. Uh, and some of them are promising uh, so far. We don't know the exact result yet. And some of them um, are not. So let's go to the next one. Now let's talk about another medication uh, that is under clinical trial, uh, Remdesivir. Uh, this uh, medication actually was made for another reason uh, that was is anti still anti RNA uh, viral medication and it was actually for Ebola and MERS uh, and this medication was really promising um, even on phase two clinical trial which the safety was good and it worked on animal uh, but when they tried on uh, human and uh, on real patients, it didn't work out very well. 
So this remdesivir actually was on the shelf and now uh, looks like it works, looks like. So be careful, <laughs> it's not the real uh, anti-COVID-19 medication, but looks like it works for COVID-19. So there, it is under clinical trial study. Right now, there are uh, different research centers, different hospitals, um, and about 1,000 patients uh, are enrolled in these studies, and it is multi-center uh, study. And we have to wait for the results uh, to see if this works or not. I, I believe uh, the results will come out in June again. Um, and so we have to wait. So let's go to the source of this study, NIH, which is National Institute of Health, and they are studying this remdesivir uh, in a multi-center uh, study. And the number of patients here actually are much more uh, than the previous medication, the Avigan study. So we have to wait. This medication, as I mentioned before, it was successful in phase one and phase two. It was successful in lab and on animals for uh, Ebola and uh, MERS, uh, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, however, it was not a very effective medication on a real clinical trial on human. Um, so it was on the shelf, it was ready to go, the safety was good, um, and now it's under clinical trial to see if it's effective against COVID-19. So uh, as we discussed, there are a lot of medication and the question is really are anti-flu or antiviral medications effective in treating COVID-19? Some of them might, some of them are promising, some of them not. Uh, basically, we have to wait on the results of the randomized clinical trials. Even many of them are not double-blinded, but in this critical situation, we have to uh, do whatever we can uh, to find out about medication. In another video, I will talk about other medications which they are not like this anti-RNA viruses medication, but uh, there are some promises actually, there are some good uh, news um, for those medications also. So hopefully they will work, we don't know, but we, as, as far as we know, several medications and vaccines are under clinical trials, the medication, the results for clinical trials of medications will be sooner uh, rather than vaccine. Vaccine will be available for public use in 2021. Hopefully early 2021, but we might wait actually for maybe spring or summer of 2021. But let's see, we have to wait and hope but for now physical distancing and personal hygiene including washing your hands for 20 seconds thorough washing or if it's not possible to wash your hand uh, use the disinfectant gel or liquids that uh, include 60 percent or more alcohol Stay safe, stay positive, stay healthy, and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any video. Uh, we are doing our best to record w one video per day, so it's going to be on a daily basis. However, sometimes maybe um, I'm busy and uh, or like the whole group are busy and we cannot provide a video but our goal is daily video we like to hear from you your stories uh, and your questions and your favorite topics
so we can talk about your favorite topic on future videos uh, and if you have any stories if you and uh, or yours uh, your family members your friends are survivors of COVID-19 and if you have any stories of you or other people that you know about sharing and helping the community the society to overcome this COVID-19 pandemic we glad to hear from you and we will be glad to share your stories on the future videos thank you so much for watching and see you tomorrow